discussing risk reward. This is going to be one of the most important videos when trading or managing a portfolio is how much risk can you place for potential profit or loss when trading a company or whatever, really anything. If you understand this principle, your account will never get, get blown up. Over a significant period of time, there's a very high probability of you making money. And you will also be better off in the trading world because you will never be risking too much where you're going to lose too much money. You also won't be making as much money. But just because you can make more money, risking more money on a decision doesn't mean it's the right call. I already discussed a, in a previous video about Kelly Criterion. I will link that video below. Basically, how much money should you start to trade? But Kelly Criterion is kind of the fundamental basis on which this conversation is going to take place. Basically, Kelly Criterion is this study or whatever, or experiment, I don't really remember. If you flip a coin, you have a 50 chance of winning or a 50 chance of losing depending on what side you chose and the game goes like this you have a starting amount of money let's say $100 how long will it take you to double your money if if every time you win the bet you win double the amount of money you bet but every time you lose you lose all the money you bet so obviously if you bet if you play the game one time and you bet $100 and you win you, you double your money you won the game in the shortest amount of time great but if you lose you lose all your money and you can no longer play so you're out of the game completely so in one turn you can double or nothing all your money so keep that in mind so kelly criterion basically says how much should you bet knowing you have a certain probability of winning or how much money should you bet based on your entire portfolio or money allocated on each individual bet and the answer is if you have a 50 50 chance of winning in that circumstance, you should bet around 10% of your entire portfolio or a money allotted to any individual bet, no more, and potentially no less. Obviously, when we get to the stock market, it's much more complicated. There might be 50-50 chances in some places. There might be 20% chances. There might be 90% chances, you know, but on average, a stock can either go up or down at any given moment. So it's about 50% chance if you buy something in X amount of time, it will be up or down. So just remember, in every bet you make, you usually don't want to bet above 10% on any given decision. Because if you lose, you want to minimize that risk and that loss. And that's one way, based on Kelly Criterion, if you follow or if you want to use that. Because that's based on statistics and other kinds of probabilities. You can look further into it. However, that's as much information as I feel like you need for this conversation. Now that you understand why 10% is about the average or the maximum you want to bet on any decision, I can walk through some examples about how to position those risks and manage that risk in just the trading world based on previous examples that I did in the past. Workhorse was one of my more recent trades. Basically, um, I have a video that goes in depth about this given trade. However, I just want to manage, or I want to tell you guys how I managed the risk reward on this. So, if you're interested in exactly how the trade played out, go see that video. I'll link it below. Basically, I see Workhorse had to sell off. I had a reason that I want to buy it. So, market opens right here. I see it had a big candle up. I'm like, I want to get into it because, I mean, on this time frame, it looks weird. But, again, we're at this we're at this support line based on past resistance level, so I became interested in this trade. I think that the price will bounce at around $20, in, or $22.80, based on something that I feel like is going to happen. I am now going to put risk on in the trade, meaning I'm going to purchase shares, put money of my capital into this asset, because I think it'll go up. Now, right as the trade is placed, a bunch of decisions are going on in my mind. Where am I going to buy and where am I going to sell? Well, I want, my decision is this 2290, this exact line is where I would be optimal to buy because I think it's going to bounce there. At 930, the stock jo 
goes all the way up to $23 and whatever cents, about a 2% move. That's, that's a pretty big move. That's, so, if, let's say I buy at exactly $22.90, that's, like, basically 0% risk right there, because I, I think it's gonna bounce there, right? I think it's gonna go up. However, there's always a chance it goes down, right? So, on this particular trade, before I even bought, I said, you know what, if it falls below, let's say, I guess there are two ways of doing this. You can either do it based on time, based on price, or both. If I thought, I said to myself, if workhorse fell below this prior pre-market low, about 22.16, which is about 3%, for more than like one or two minutes, I would be out of the trade because that means I am wrong, it did not bounce. Could it have still bounced later on in the day? Yeah, of course, but I'm not willing to bet that. Any Anything below 22.90 is a buying point for me. Obviously, you can see it never actually got there, but as a risk reward point of view, I'm willing to lose 3% of this trade on a potential, sorry, I keep jumping around, but on a potential uh, 8%, yeah, 8%. Now, that's if everything goes perfectly. That's if I buy that exact level, and that's if it goes down and then goes up. You know, yeah, everything has to play, but you have to have various scenarios in your head about what's going to happen. So, knowing that I might make 8% or I might lose 3%, I begin to say, well, am I very confident about this trade? 10%. I can bet 10% of my portfolio based on credit criterion. However, I'm not so sure about this trade just because I don't have a very successful you know, track record of buying at a support and it going up. You know, so something like AMD. I mean, AMD had this massive move from like here to here, you know, I we we caught or I caught that, and I was very confident it was gonna do that. So I added maybe 15% of my portfolio, maybe yeah, probably 15, because I had higher conviction with workhorse. I did not have that high of a conviction, so I did not use 80 or 10% of my portfolio. It was probably like five. Now, that's one way you can manage downside risk. Is because I wasn't that convicted on the play. However, I thought, you know, it's probably going to bounce. I might try to make some money. One way I managed that risk, again, was limiting my position size. It never got down to here. It never did that. I saw a big candle wake up. This line is where I bought 23.30. Oh, that, so that is 2% higher than I wanted. That's very high. However, I saw this pattern forming a trend line. You know, we have this support, or this resistance area. It seemed like it wanted to break to the upside. I added the position. So immediately, it wasn't a trade I was very highly convicted in. However, I thought it was going to move. I also got it higher than I wanted. So that, again, because I got it more expensive, I cut back my risk by buying less shares. And so maybe I'm at like 4% of my portfolio now. I'm at so little just because of my conviction rate. Now, if I lose money, the amount of money I'm putting on as, as risk is so much less, so I'm okay losing that. The amount of shares I'd be buying at 22.90 is a lot more than if I bought at 23.30. That should make sense, right? Not because it's more expensive, but because the risk is much greater of me buying here. Now, if I bought here and it goes down, I may have to say, well, maybe if it doesn't hold here, oh, 22.90, and I'm in like three minutes, I have to get out. Because this, if I wait to here, that's a 5% loss, and I'm only getting about a 4% gain. So ultimately, it shoots up. Now we're at this, you know, $24 area. You know, we're up like 6%. That's basically where my target uh, reward was. So I basically cut the position and made some money on that. Hopefully that illustrated one way about how to manage and position size with risk. Position sizing, I guess I could do a separate video, however, it is in the same category of understanding. Uh, let's... Now, this was obviously like a day trade, this is very short. I usually don't do day trades because it, I just lose more often than I win. We can go to space, this was a different trade I had. So we were, I was looking at it back down here. So using daily candles, this around $15 was my buy zone, 15, like 50 maybe. And I thought anything around here I think is a good buy based on previous price action and just how I think going, things are going. Now it's like when do I decide to buy and put on that risk? Well, I saw these candles moving, I saw certain things I think around here I thought it was going to break. I ended up putting my risk on about 10%, 14% higher than I originally wanted to. My position size was 
much smaller, like maybe 1% of the portfolio up here. And as it got down here, I didn't think it was going to fold, so I sold it, although it did end up holding and shooting above. This is based on the past of what actually happened in my mind. My risk level up here again, what I should have done is as it approached the price that I wanted, I could have began adding a position and eventually noticing a bounce if it did. However, if it kept going down and it was reaching these like $14 lows, I might consider getting out, cutting that risk, taking that money off the table and just say, hey, I lost. So as you become more confident in the trade that you're willing to take based on a decision, you the closer to that 10% Kelly criterion kind of value you can get based on your portfolio. Now, uh, I guess I should really address, I mean, if you understood that one sentence right there, you got the whole video basically. It's, it is very simple. It does get complicated, however, if you just break it down, it is quite easy. One thing I forgot to mention is this idea of risk reward, like one, three, you know, stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's important, but it's not practical in essence, so. Let me bring up a trade. Um, well, I guess we'll just go to workhorse again. If I told you that this trade was eight to three, I guess, that's basically a, like, was a 1.25 to one trade, or, you know, 2.25, something like that, like a two to one trade, you'd be like, I don't want to take that. But it's, uh, these people that say, oh, you gotta have to have, like, an eight one trade. You have to find these in the market and do that. Uh, I'm telling you, it doesn't really work out as, as much as you think. Just based on experience, one thing is like win resorts. So, uh, win resorts, you know, I basically 70 bucks was a buying zone for me. I gave myself, you know, there's always a time element to these trades and stuff. If you don't have the time element, then it, your money is better off put somewhere else if you're going to trade. Anyway, $70, $70 was my price. If I got it at that, oh, that'd be great. That's where I want to beef up the position. As we get to like $72, $73, I become less interested. About $74, the risk reward isn't there because I thought it was going to move to 70 to about 77 about 10% move. If I get it at this $70 mark, and I assume a 2% downside risk based on previous candles, that's a 5 to 1 trade or a 10 to 2 trade. That's really good. Uh, what actually happened is, I think I got it on like this candle or this candle for like $73. It ended up going to 77 so that's a 5% trade. However, me buying it at 72 made this trade a 1 to 1 trade. That's terrible. However, if I manage the risk by placing my position sizes differently, so I started a position, let's say 73 and ended up falling, maybe going above. However, I never um, added to this added to the position down here because I didn't feel that confident anymore in the trade. However, I wanted to give it room to work. So what actually happened is I lost 5% and then I gained, you know, the 10%. So how the trade was executed was pretty poorly. The risk reward is really dependent, again, on your position to where you are convicted and your price and the price at which you get the trades at and, again, the, the potential sell points. Why it was this a potential sell point? Well, if you look at a higher time frame, you know, we got candle wick here, 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 here. We have a lot of activity around this price. That's how I decided that this would be a potential support. This would be a potential sell point for for sellers. And things could go up, it could go down, it could not touch here. Things happen in the market. And it, this is just, I mean, the fact that it did do that, and that is not luck, but it's, it's a probable event with unexpected so it doesn't have to do it, but it could. Anyway, I kind of forgot what I was saying, but you're never going to really get exactly the trade you want. Or, I mean, you could, but me, I never really do it. I knew I was probably not going to be able to get 70 bucks. However, if I was a little more patient, I would have been able to add to the position. Sorry, I'm talking really fast. I'll try to slow it down. I know it's supposed to be a relaxing video. If, so if I was bought, if I wanted to buy $71, 70 bucks, whatever, here, I'd be willing to tack on maybe like 8% of my whole portfolio based on this decision. Why? I have conviction it's going to bounce. I don't have that confirmation. These aren't the typical patterns I like to trade that give me high returns. Maybe 8% down here. Up here, I think maybe like 4%. And that should make 
makes sense again as you're getting to the point you want to buy the higher probability you want to the higher amount of money you want to put bet on the trade because your risk reward is tight again risk reward down here is about one to five two to ten if i buy it here it's about one to one big huge difference in the amount of money you should tackle on the amount of risk and the amount of like leeway you should you know combat the trade with i guess i'm I don't even know if that made sense. Hopefully this is all coming together, making sense. And here's the thing, you might be like, oh, what, what if I had 100% of my portfolio again here, and I made it here, I could have increased my portfolio 10 times because that trade was successful. But it's, again, what if it didn't do it? What if you bought Workhorse, right, on this breakout, and you kept you a bag hole, held it for another day, and you're down 8% now? Remember, if you lose 50% of your money, you have to have a 100% trade to get back to your original amount of money. This is why risk management is more important than making money. In the long haul, the stock market will probably go up. Inflation exists. Companies over time increase profits. They become more profitable and efficient. Stuff like that. What we're doing is we are not we are betting against that basically and we're betting on time we are risking more money in an allocated amount of time for a potential more reward you don't want to get in these weird positions bag hold stuff get hit really hard and then yeah now you're forced if you lose 50 percent of your money in like a trade or even like in 10 trades you're basically out of your own game you have to make so much more money or add money to the just to like get back to where you were now i can we're getting into a lot of conversation and stuff but let's say you have a thousand dollars and you make a hundred dollars at 10 percent trade so just somehow you get it now at first if you have one thousand dollars in your portfolio as a bad example if you have one hundred thousand dollars in your portfolio every trade you can bet about 10 to 10 grand however let's say you double your money you make 200 grand let's be very optimistic Let's say your portfolio is 200 grand now. Each trade you can make 20,000, or each trade yeah, you can bet 20,000 because that's how Kelly Criterion works. And that's just based on the principle of like just how it should you know happen. The more money in your portfolio, the higher conviction you have about certain trades, the more money that you can bet willingly on you know it working. Obviously, it's it's more complicated. There's a lot more things involved. It's the stock market, it's not coin flipping, but I'm not a math wizard. I mean, I did study engineering in school, but I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial assistant. I'm just explaining to you how to manage risk in certain probability scenarios. One of the ways to manage risk is by understanding Kelly Criterion and how to decide how much money should be placed based on any given bet on a like within your portfolio or within a given amount of money very long talk i hopefully you guys found this informative though uh, i would definitely do more research risk managing risk again it's easy but you can't mess it up because one wrong move if you risk too much if you risk even but yeah, if you risk too little and you do good on the trade you're gonna feel bad that you should have had more like an, in the trade but again it's better to have less money in a trade and make little money than to have more money on a decision and lose more money it's easier to recuperate the money or it's harder to recuperate money if you have really significant losses relative to your whole entire portfolio again like space i was down i think eight percent at one point on a trade that's a pretty significant amount of percentage points but relative to my entire portfolio it was like basically nothing so that eight percent trade was bad but it did not impact my portfolio really at all and that's the key thing but if i was right yeah i would have made some money it would have been cool but as we got down to these lower parts i should have i added on to the position because if there was a move which i mean there was but i'm not talking about hindsight i'm just saying down here was the position i wanted to buy if i bought down there i could have managed that risk more tighter based on price action and what i thought was going to happen Anyway, as, of, as usual, any questions, let me know below. I could either try to answer them or just make a separate video. And yeah, thank you all for listening and watching, and hopefully...
hopefully you found this somewhat either relaxing or, you know, resourceful. So anyway, good night, everybody. I'll see you.